Welcome to Truth and Life Urban Ministry, where faith and activism meet. Here's your host, Brother Leon Prophet to the streets and pastor to the people. What's going on, good people? Good morning. This is your pastor, Pastor Leon, prophet to the streets and pastor to you good people. Man, it feels so good to be here. It feels so good to be alive because God is still on the throne this morning. So I'm going to tell you right now, man, no matter who is president of our nation, God will always be king. So today, guys, let me start this. We are still in our series, changing the narratives of our lives and changing the narrative of men. I'm going to be ministering to men for a minute here. So we covered the temptation of men. This week, we are going to cover the calling of men. And I'm subtitling this. You're crazy because a lot of times when you realize that you're called of God, a lot of people, they don't understand. A lot of people, they label you as crazy. They label you as off. And even sometimes, like I said in a previous message, tears on bricks, you got to keep building. You got to keep going, even though the opinions of men may come because the opinions of men are always going to be there. And one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, this time and in this age, you can't afford to wait for people's approval for you to go and start what God has already put in your heart. And that's the God knows truth. Now, I'm not going to lie. You're going to need relationships. But when God tells you to start, start. Because people are always going to tell you, oh, it's too soon. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. It's always going to be a oh. It's always going to be something. But I'm going to tell you this. If you get to the place where you acknowledge the voice of men more than the voice of God, then you acknowledge that voices of men are more important, more permanent than the voice of God. You make those priorities. You make those primary and those voices become pertinent. So the one thing that I want you guys to understand, man, listen to God. Because I'm going to tell you this. When I first started, I started on the radio. And and I knew God called me to this. But the questions that were raised to me, well, did you get permission from pastor? It's like, no, I didn't. And when I tried to explain explain it to, to my pastor that, that, that I was there at the time who was covering me at the time I explained it to him and he was he was like yeah you know this, this part is easy the part of the radio that's easy but you gotta start walking it out and I started walking it out and I'm not gonna lie it, it was it was a time in the wilderness but it was also a time where I had to rely upon God you know, and people didn't understand. People didn't accept me. I got that. I'm serious. I, I mean, man, I'm straight up street preacher. Even now. But even when, you know, we were forming Truth and Life Urban Ministry, God was with us. So, hey, guys, meet me over on Facebook. I'm getting ready to go in there right now. Hold tight. Truth and Life Urban Ministry, where faith and activism meet. Here's your host, Brother Leon Prophet to the streets and pastor to the people. (laughs) 
Good morning, Facebook Live family. This is your pastor, Pastor Leon, prophet to the streets and pastor to you good people. Good morning. Today, we are still in our series, Changing the Narratives of Our Lives. And I'm not going to lie, I was just on the podcast talking to the listeners and everything, you know, just trying to get them to come over here to Facebook Live because today we are going to go into a new segment of that message because the one thing that I want you guys to understand, we are going to be ministering to men for a moment because the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that our whole society and community and houses changes by the men that are there. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that God has called men. He's called men for such a time as this. He's called men to change nations, to change houses, to change the communities in which they live. And so I started out this series talking about, you know, changing the narratives. And I said in the beginning that we always hear about what men are supposed to be, what men are supposed to do. And one thing that I also said is we can always talk about and go to, you know, what men are supposed to do. But the challenge that I gave in the beginning was this, is that who are you going to give your power to? Because the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that as a man, whoever you give your strength to, whoever you give your power to, whoever you give your, your mind to, you become the servant to that. And so... The emphasis on this was in order for men to change the narratives of their lives, they have to begin to give their power, give their, 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 their willingness, their will and everything that makes them a man, give that over to God. Because the one thing I'm going to tell you in this message today is that life is prophetic. I'm going to say it again. Life is prophetic and life is seasonal. And so in order for you as a man to change the narratives of your life, the first stage you're going to come across is temptation. And that's what we talked about. The temptation of man, the temptation to, to not be a son of God, the temptation to, to give into the world's definition of what manhood is. And there are so many definitions of what manhood is, what manhood should be. You get it from the church, you get it from the world, you get it from every source. But the one thing I'm going to tell you this morning is this, is that man will give you religion. They will give you religion to control you, but they will never give you truth to free you. So as a man, you have to begin to to navigate your life to truth. Because the Bible says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's the God knows truth. When, 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 when truth comes to men, those men have the opportunity to be free. So let's go in here. Let's pray because I'm excited this morning. Father, Lord God, we thank you for the men. We thank you, Lord God, from the men from the North and from the South and from the East and from the West. We thank you, Lord God, for the prophetic destiny that is over men this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for the calling and the decree that is over your men this morning. And so, Father, we decree in the name of Jesus that no man who comes into this house, who comes under this leadership, will be lost. We decree in the name of Jesus that these men, that they will add to their homes, that they will add to their communities, because Lord, these men are blessed, and you said in your word that the blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it, so I thank you, Lord God, for the asset of men, for the blessing of men, for the loyalty and the faithfulness and the strength of men, sanctify our manhood this morning, sanctify and cleanse our desires that we may give ourselves wholly unto you, willfully unto you, that we may yield unto you this morning, this day, in Jesus' name, amen. So with that being said, let us go into the message. Because the goal of this message this morning 
is to get men to see that they are called to be sons of God and to manifest that in every aspect of their lives. Because that's what life is about. Life is about, as a spiritual person, it's about manifestation. Manifestation for blessing, manifestation for increase, manifestation for prosperity. And you have to realize that life, like I said, is seasonal because you go through seasons in life. If you look at the four seasons that are in our community, in our world, the Bible says, as long as the earth remain, if there will be seed time and harvest, That means that there will be time to sow seeds and there will also be times to sow a harvest, to reap a harvest. So I want you guys to be encouraged this morning that no matter what, God can change the narrative of your life. As a man, God can change the narrative of your life, man. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you may have been involved with. I don't care what the circumstances are. God can redeem the time. God can turn things around. God can change you. But you have to be willing and you have to be obedient to the word of the Lord. So I'm not going to lie, man. <laughs> like I said this morning, they're going to call you crazy. But the one thing about being called crazy, you have to realize this. God has called you for such a time. And like I was telling the listeners on the podcast early this morning, is that when I started, I'm not going to lie, it was a whole lot of people bombarding me with questions on why I started in ministry. Did I get this person's permission? Did I do this? Did I do that? And I'm not going to lie, it was like jumping through hurdles and hoops, but I know what God told me. I know what God told me when it came to writing my books. I know what God told me when he told me to start this platform. I know what he was telling me when he gave me the vision for this church. And so I'm not going to lie. You're going to get all kinds of questions. And like I said, as a man, you're going to come across temptation. The temptation to to stop. The temptation to give into the aspect of, okay, I need to wait until the, 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 the conditions are perfect. There's nothing going on in my life to start this. And if you wait for that, you are going to forever be waiting. You're going to forever be starting because you give your permission, your power over to the opinions of men and not to God. The only thing that matters this day is what God has said. And that's the God knows truth. And a lot of us, we get so caught up in what other people say and what other people do when it comes to the calling of God on our lives. So I'm here to tell you this morning, say yes to God. As a man, say yes to God. As a woman, say yes to God. And take and block out everything that is trying to question your sonship or daughtership or even the things that are trying to make you question whether or not God told you to do a certain thing. Because some of you that are listening to me, some of you that are viewing me right now, you know that God put something in your heart. And yet the questions of man are putting you at a stall, at a standstill. And I'm here to tell you this morning that it is God's will that you break the chains of people's opinion. Because there's always going to be somebody saying something. Negative as well as positive. And you can't give in to neither one of them words. You got to be the person who's going to be consistent, whether you have the permissions of men, whether you have their blessing, you got to keep going because trust and believe if you feel as though that you got to wait for everybody's permission to say, yes, you ain't going to never have nothing. You ain't going to never start because the world is conditioned to keep you where you are. People are conditioned to keep you in a box. And a lot of us don't like that. But I'm going to tell you this morning, break the box, break the ceiling, break the chain, and get moving. That's the God knows truth. God is a progressive God. And the one thing that we got to realize about God, it is about the journey with God. The children of Israel were on a journey. And the one thing that you got to realize is that God, he is outside of time, but God works on a timetable. 
God works to put you in a place. If he's called you, he's going to sustain you. If he's called you for a certain cause, if he's called you for a certain ministry, if he's called you to build a certain business, he is with you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the devil ain't going to tell you start a church. The devil ain't going to tell you to start a business, to start a nonprofit that's going to help the community. Why do you think we call this Truth and Life Urban Ministry? The reason why we call it Truth and Life Urban Ministry is because God has called us to build a place where faith and activism meet. This is a church that's for the city. This is a church that is for people of color, for the marginalized. And that's the God knows truth. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that as men, you are going to come across other people, other things that's going to uh, try to persuade you to don't go, to don't start. You're not mature enough. You ain't this. You ain't that. You need to get this person's permission. You need to get that person's covering. I'm going to tell you this, whether or not you get covered, whether or not you have a spiritual father, you still have a call and a mandate from God. And that's the God knows truth. And if God is your father, he's giving you confirmation. He's giving you affirmation to go, to start. And so this morning we are going to talk about the calling of men and why some of us, even myself, are called crazy. So hold tight. Life is seasonal and prophetic, and every man will experience life in seasons and moments that will challenge and even define who that man is or will become. There are four seasons upon the earth, and those four seasons can be seen symbolically or even spiritually in our lives, because, you know, there are times where you may be going through seasons of winter, meaning basically those seasons, the dark has come, the dark comes early in winter seasons. Things are cold. You can't really grow in the winter season. You really can't sow seed in the winter season, but then you have the fall. Fall, you know, comes before winter. And the one thing about the fall season is that you have some things that you can harvest in the fall season. And then you have spring, which means the newness and seeing things bloom, new growth, the warmth begins to come. And so in the spring season, those are the times where you can begin to sow seeds. But I love, like I said earlier, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So as long as you are upon the earth, as long as you have life, you're going to go through seasons of life. You're going to go through changes of life. But the one thing that I want you to know is God has given us faith for living as well as grace. We have as men a prophetic destiny over our lives. And you're going to go through seasons because this is what God has ordained. But he gives you grace and he gives you strength for the day and for the seasons in which you live. You have strength for every day. The mercies of God are new every morning. So as your days are, so shall your strength be. And that's the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know. I'm going to say it again. As your strength is. As your days are, so shall your strength be. And life is seasonal. Life is prophetic. Let's go to the last one, summer. The summertime is a time to be in full cultivation of what has been sown during the other seasons. And so you may say, well, what can I do during the winter season? What you can do in the winter season is preparation. Because preparation is not lost time. You can begin to prepare for the other seasons in the time where it's cold, in the time where you can't sow, in the time where, where, where the light gets, gets shorter. I'm telling you, man, yo, you're going to have to learn how to navigate in the cold seasons, in the winter seasons, because a lot of us feel as though that it's not God that we go through winter seasons. You're going to go through every season of life. And the one thing I'm going to tell you this, you may not like what I'm getting ready to say, no season lasts forever, even the good ones, even the springtime, even the summer, they do not last forever. 
So you got to begin to prepare yourself and get in a place where you are habitually preparing. Habitually preparing for the time where you can't sell for the time where it looks like, Hey, you know, we ain't going to be taking in a harvest. That's what Joseph did. He, he, he built and sustained Egypt in the times of harvest. He gathered in so much grain that when those years of harvest hit, I mean, those years of famine hit, he was able to not only save Egypt, but also the known world at that time, everything outside of Egypt. They had to come, they had to come to Egypt, come to Joseph to be delivered, to be saved, to eat. And so this is what God has called us because the one thing that you got to realize is that as a call comes to you, you have to ask yourself, am I going to answer it? Am I going to say yes to God? And when I do say yes to God, am I going to go on along this journey? Because the journey is going to take you through the fall. The journey is going to take you through the winter. The journey is going to take you through the spring. The journey is going to take you through summer. But it is God's prophetic destiny over your life that gives you the strength to endure. Because if he's spoken it, so shall it come to pass. And all you got to do is say, Lord, I'm willing. Yes, Lord, I am willing to, to obey you. I'm willing to do whatever you have called me to do. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 and 2. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Everything that God does, he operates within a timetable. And so that's the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know that God operates within a timetable. If God has called you, God will sustain you. If God has called you, he will lead you and guide you on the journey. And I'm not going to lie. A lot of us, we trip because, you know, we, we, we are following God. We are trusting God. But then in the same token, we feel as though that we can always gauge God with our senses. And a lot of times it has to be about trusting God with all your heart and leaning not into your own understanding. Your own understanding is your feelings and you feel as though that, okay, if, if, if I can't feel God, if I can't see God, then maybe, you know, God's not with me. I'm not going to lie. God, he's with you. Even when you can't sense him, even when you can't feel him, even you may not perceive him at times because the one thing you got to know about some of these seasons when the elements come, when the rain hits, when the fog is out there, there's a lot of things that distort the vision. There's a lot of things that will make you think, no, nah, it, it, it's, it's this or it's that, but it's trying to distort and it comes to distort and the elements are there for a reason. And so you got to begin to give God praise when it's raining. When there's fog, when there's snow, and even when there's heat, I'm not going to lie, man, yo, I work outside, so I know, you know, what happens during the spring, man, rain, summer, man, please, I've been outside them 100 degree plus days, some of you know, some of you have the blessing of working inside, working with heat, working with air condition, <laughs> I'm serious, some of you guys, you have that. So the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that you got to begin to trust God. I'm serious. When it comes to the call of God, you got to trust and know that God is going to bring you through. Everything, there is a purpose under the heaven. I'm telling you, man, look. Seasons change. Careers change, anointings change, vocations change, but the purpose of God will always remain the same. You may ask yourself, well, hey, Brother Leon, Pastor Leon, what is the purpose of God for my life? The purpose of God for your life is that you be a manifested son and manifest forth the power of God. Every son has access to the power of God. What is the power of God? 
the power of prophecy, the power of manifestation, the power to overcome the works of the devil, the power to believe, the power to see change. And that goes back to manifestation. Because the Bible says in the book of John, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. And you got to look at that word power. You get dunamis power. There is power because you belong to the kingdom of God. You belong to God. Dunamis power. Blunt power, blunt strength to overcome things. That's what Samson had. The power of God came upon him and he was able as a judge to overthrow his enemies with brute force, with brute brute strength. And a lot of you, God is giving you power. He's giving you the power of organization. He's giving you the power to multiply. You can take a dollar and turn it into 10 because God has given you that much wisdom to know the language of finance. Some of you right now who are listening to me, some of you right now who are viewing me, God has put a prophetic vision on the inside of you. Some of you are writers. Some of you are are media producers, content creators like myself. And God has called you. And so you got to get out of here and, and realize, hey, I got I to gotta put some faith in what God has called me to do. Because the Bible says, faith without works is dead. Success is not just going to drop in your lap. I don't care if you're sitting home praying in tongues, reading the Bible. You got to get out here and learn about the field. You got to get out here and learn about what God has called you to. And every man, not only does he have a spiritual call, but he has a vocation that goes with that call. So there is a physical call to what God has called you to. And you may ask yourself, you know, what is it? What are you passionate about? What are the things that move your heart? Because I came to this whole thing of activism because I sat in church Sunday after Sunday. And then when these atrocities happened to people of color, we still sat in church. And it wasn't until George Floyd that the church, (laughs) it was like, man, somebody turned on the stove and and we jumped up all of a sudden. But I'm not going to lie. I've been feeling that. I've been feeling like, man, what are we doing? Why are we sitting here? Why come we're not talking about this? I felt that. And a lot of us, we, you know, a lot of, a lot of preachers, I understand that you don't want to get involved in politics. I understand that you don't want to get involved when it comes to, to, to social justice and things that are happening when it comes to race relations. I understand that. But these are the things that affect your community. And sometimes you may not want to get involved, but you're going to have to get involved because this is the demographic that sits in your church. These are the demographics that are in your community that you're called to serve. And so for me to not say anything, for me to just sit there in church, it's an indictment that I'm okay with the problems that are going on, especially when I see it, especially when I know that God has given me a mandate and a call. He's given us the ministry of deliverance to begin to pull down the strongholds and show people not only spiritual warfare, but also warfare outside. We got to begin to get involved in City Hall. We got to begin to protest. That is why Truth and Life Urban Ministry is here. Because God gave me this vision in 2019. I I didn't even see going online. I just wanted to be an online itinerant minister that goes from church to church. That's all. But then when COVID happened, I'm like, wow, Lord, it's crazy. Because you gave me a vision for a time that was not yet. And it happened. So I'm telling you right now is that God is going to begin to prepare you for the time in which we are or time that is not yet. That's what I mean when I say life is prophetic. Because how is it that I could write something that didn't even happen? And the crazy thing about it is that there was so much of a move so much of a move to get me to where I was. I'm and I'm, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was like, man, Lord, what is going on? Because it first started with questions. 
And I had to go to a place that wasn't familiar to get the answers. And I did. And when I got those answers, when I got that confirmation, I ran with it. And I'm not going to lie, man. People question the hell out of me. Well, why are you going there? Why well, I don't understand this. Why does, why does he call himself this? And I, I mean, all kinds of stuff because of the people that I connected to. And it's crazy. It's like, you know, how is it that you can be around certain people all your life and people that don't know you understand you better or see the call on your, on your life more than the people that are around you. And the reason that is, is because familiar, you know, being familiar, a familiar spirit. And it's not, you know, a lot of times, you know, something from the devil It's just the fact that they are familiar with you. And a lot, a lot of people are not going to be able to accept the fact that you're going to grow. They accept the fact of where you are in your weakness. They accept the fact where you are in your brokenness. They accept the fact of where you are when they see areas in your life like sin. But then when you start to rise up and God begins to heal, when God begins to deliver and God begins to sanctify you, meaning set you apart, separate you, then all of a sudden it becomes a problem. But the thing is, you got to remember that there are people who are committed to your weakness and not to your strength. They will sit in your face and look at you frustrated and won't even say anything. And that's the God who knows truth. And I, and I sat in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday frustrated because I felt as though, man, what are we doing? And then I got involved with this. I, you know, I got involved with the youth, teaching the youth. And then that stopped. And then I began to ask God, all right, Lord, what, what now? You know, what now? And so just ended up, man, you know, going from here, <laughs> leaving one church, going to another church. And then having a falling out because that church didn't want to stand with the community when it came to black lives, saying that black lives matter was of the devil. And I get the fact that you may not agree with the organization. I get that. But when you have a problem with the saying, that's why I draw the line. I'm not going to preach white supremacy out of these black lips. That's the God knows truth. I'm not going to be your preaching Negro. I'm not going to be your token, your token minister. I'm not going to be that. You ain't going to add me to the collection. Sorry. And from that, God put me in a protest and he spoke audibly to me. That was my call. But today I want to talk about yours. Psalms 90 and 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Because like I said earlier, God does everything within the timetable. God has given us days. He's given us times. He's given us seasons. And so the one thing that you have to avoid are the time wasters. You have to avoid emotional vampires. And so if, if you have people that are constantly wasting your time, if you have people that are emotional vampires and don't want to, you know, invest in their own deliverance, don't want to invest in their own healing, want you to do all the praying, want you to do all the believing, then you are going to have to separate yourselves from those people because literally, yes, they will suck the life out of you if you keep entertaining them. And a lot of us need to break that whole thing of codependency off. We got to begin to stop enabling people. Because we as men, we as men, women, we do it. We enable. We empower. We empower those who do not have our best interests. And we do it because, you know, the need to want to be needed, the need to love, the need to feel love, we do that. But I'm here to tell you this day is that you got to begin to draw the line. And that is why it's so important that you begin to apply your heart unto wisdom because the Bible says, teach us Lord to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Psalms 31 and 15, my times are in thy hand. So I want to tell you, and I said it earlier that life is prophetic. Prophecy is revelation. 
It is forward speaking. It is also the testi- testimony of what was or what is to come. I want to give you this scripture and we get ready to take this bad boy home. Revelations 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren and have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what that basically means is, is that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is revelation. Prophecy is forward speaking. Prophecy is the testimony of what was or what is to come. That is what prophecy is. And so when I say that life is prophetic, you are forward speaking. You are a living testimony of what was or what is to come. So this is the reason why God has called you as a man to break the generational curse because you are a testimony of what was. I'll give you a scenario. You have a father who drank, who was an alcoholic, but then he has two sons. One son doesn't touch the alcohol. And his thing is, I I saw my dad. The other son, man, please, he can't function until he gets a drink. And his thing is, I saw my dad. So it's about perception. And so I'm here to tell you this day is that you can be the end of iniquity. You can be the end of generational curses because God has called you as a man to live your life prophetic. And also knowing that as a man, that if I live prophetically, I'm going to go through seasons of life. But it is for the purpose of God. And I'm going to tell you this, when you get a prophecy, Prophecy is supposed to bring you edification, comfort, and confirmation. Those are the things that prophecy is supposed to give. Does prophecy give warning? Yes. Or or, or, or as a prophet, are you supposed to accept curses? And I'm not saying cussing, I'm saying curses. No. Can you disagree with a prophet? Yes. Because I'm going to tell you, you can disagree with a prophet. And I don't want you feeling as though that, ooh, the prophet is the boogeyman. Nah, man, please. Who's afraid of the big bad prophet? I said a message on that. I gave you that. Because I'm going to tell you this. All prophecy is is speaking. And, And if you give your power of belief over to what the word of the prophet has spoken, trust and believe those words will come to pass because you believe. Just like the word of the Lord. If God has spoken and you choose to believe, it will happen. If you don't believe it, it won't happen. Just like Jesus, there were people there who didn't believe, so he couldn't do no mighty works. So I'm going to tell you, this is why I'm telling you, this message is not about what you're supposed to be, but who you're going to give your power to, who you're going to give your belief to. Because if you believe in the curse, if you believe in the boogeyman, then that's what you're going to manifest. That's what's going to come to you or it's going to come, you know, you go to it or it comes to you. What you believe in. And so you got to make sure that you don't give your power, your convictions, your beliefs over to just any old thing. Know that life is prophetic and know that as life is prophetic, you're going to go through seasons. And if the word of the Lord does come to you, make sure that it comes to bring confirmation. Make sure that it comes to bring edification and comfort. Because I'm going to tell you, man, people can pull names out of the air. They can give you addresses and phone numbers. And that's the ooh, ah, that's the prestige of the magic trick to get you to go into your pocket and give. But the one thing that I want you to know is this, is that if they can give you your name, your address, and phone number, but can't give you directions on what God wants to do and confirm what God wants to do, what God has spoken in your heart, then all it is is prestige. Seriously. Because you need direction for your life. And if these prophets can't take 
and, you know, see where God wants to take you, but can't even break the words and the fear of the enemy of coming into that prophetic, prophetic word off of you, then, hey, I question them. Because, hey, if you can speak the word and you can see them devils, you cast them out, cast them off for me too. Not just, not, not just half a work, but a whole work. Not just heal the daughter of, of Zion slightly, but do it whole. My whole spirit, my whole soul, my whole body, whole. And we need to be made whole. That's the God knows truth. Let's go back here into the scripture. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I'm here to tell you is that Jesus is testifying of you. The works that I do shall you do and greater. The greater work is breaking generational curses. The greater work is laying the foundation upon which your family can build on. The greater work is coming into that prophecy and handing it off to the next generation. This is what God has given me. This is what God has shown me. Son, I give it to you. Daughter, I give it to you. Be better. Do better. Go harder. Go stronger. Have more. But I'm the foundation. And that's the God knows truth because here's the one thing that you got to realize is that it's about legacy. When you look at the Bible, you see father, you see son, you see prophetic destiny, you see the seed of the prophetic. When you look at the scriptures, man, please, they thought Jesus was crazy. They thought John the Baptist was crazy. They thought Jeremiah was crazy. They thought that Isaiah was crazy. But the one thing I'm going to tell you this is that even when it comes to Isaiah, Isaiah was this in the year King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord even in the midst of transition, even in the midst of winter, even in the midst of death, you can still see God and know that God has called you even though your heart is broken. I'm here to declare to you men today that no matter what the season of life may hold for you, that God has still called you. God has still called you. He has still said, yes, you are still his son. I don't care what has happened. Divorce may have happened. Affairs may have happened. You may have lost your kids. But I'm here to tell you this morning is that God has still said yes to you and that you can have a turnaround. Because God says, I will redeem the time. I will restore to you the years. That is why God works on a timetable that is outside of ours. Because he's alpha. He is omega. And we got to trust him in the messy middle. I ain't going to lie. I wish I did know God's middle name. Because at least I could say he's alpha, so and so and so, omega. <laughs> I'm serious. Because if you know him as the Alpha, he is the beginning. If you know him as the Omega, he is the end. And hey, we got to have faith for that middle because I ain't going to lie. Sometimes the middle of the journey is the messiest part. When you almost, you, you too far to go back, but then you got to keep moving and you don't even know like, Lord, hey, the fog is out here. I can't even see. I can't even sense you. And this is why we have to trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Remember that, that movie Indiana Jones and the last crusade, the walk of faith. Remember seeing Indiana Jones grab his heart and then take that step. And then he stepped on the path. And then next thing you know, he had the stones and he put the stones so he could see the path to save his father. God has called some of you to break the generational curse that your father could not see. But you see, and God has given you grace to see from the eyes of the oppressed to break that curse so that you, the, 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 the children that you have, the children that your kids are going to have, the grandchildren that are going to come from you, so they don't have to know that life. They're going to live in the blessing. They're going to know Canaan land. They're going to be Ephraim and Manasseh to you. 
Because if you look at Joseph, his, his sons were, God has made me to forget all the toil in all of my father's house. That was one of the meaning of one of the son's names. And the other son name meant that God has blessed me in the land of my affliction. The places where you are afflicted at, God's going to bless you. And God is going to cause you with that prophetic destiny and that call that's over your life to cause you to walk in a way that's going to make you forget all the hell that people put you through, all the questions. Because trust and believe, you're going to hear, oh, when you start getting into the call of God and things start to be built, that's when people come out. Oh, you won't, you ain't got no time for us. Oh, you put, you put this ahead of us. You put the business ahead of us. You put ministry ahead of us. But the crazy thing about it is that there was not even that thing when you were in the midst of building. Nobody said nothing when you was praying. Nobody said nothing when you were writing things down. But soon as they start seeing the manifestation, soon as you start flowing, soon as you start walking, all of a sudden, here it is. And even though you may try to explain, and even though you may try your hardest to include, some people don't want it because they, they, they don't like the fact that you left and that you're not the same person that, that they think you should be or you're not that old person who was dependent, who, who was helpless. And that's the God knows truth. So the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, man. God has called you for such a time as this. And the prophetic destiny over your life is a prophetic destiny that's going to bring confirmation, edification, and comfort. God is going to use you to break generational curses. God is going to use you for deliverance. God is going to use you to build up. And it's going to be greater than you can imagine. Trust and believe. I started this. God put this in my heart to start, but I know I'm not going to finish it. But you're going to know I was here and the people that come behind me, the, the pastors that come behind me, the ministers, the activists that come behind me. I want them to be better than me. I want them to build this thing better, more, reach more people because that's what it's about. I'm serious. It's not a one, a one all be all. It's not that. This is God's. And just like there was a Moses, there was a Joshua. And just like there was a Joshua, there was the judges. And so my thing is, hey, I'm handing this off. And there's going to be those who are going to be Joshua's. There's going to be those who's going to be Samuel's. There's those who are going to be able to carry this thing further than I could. Because it's not just about me. It's about us. It's about our community. And that's the God knows truth. Jeremiah 1, and we're landing the plane right here. Jeremiah 1, 5 to 10. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, ah, Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whosoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to boil down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And that's what I said about that's what I talked about in the beginning of the message about life being seasonal, about sowing seeds, because this, which this is what you do as a man. The one thing about men is that on the inside of you physically, as well as spiritually, you carry seed. 
You, you carry the seed of generations. A, a life tree is on the inside of you. You get life lessons from men. Men can create, but they need women to birth. You carry the seed. You carry the life. You carry the strength. But when it comes to, to physicality, you need a woman to birth. But when it comes to the thing that God has placed in your heart, you got to have strength and faith to see that thing manifest and be birthed out of you. Birthed out of your faith. Birthed out of your heart. Birthed out of your desire. Out of your passion. The thing that God put on the inside of you. Because God has called you to build. God has called you to destroy. Destroy the works of the enemy. Destroy the works that are are damning the community. Destroy those works because God has given you power and authority. You are just like Jesus. Say that with me. I'm just like Jesus. And I'm going to I'm going to claim this over you. And I've got Neil Adams watching me right now. How God anointed Neil Andrews, who went about doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil, because God was with him. That's what God has called you to do. And like I said, the purpose of God over your life is to manifest. The purpose of God is to be a manifested son of God in the earth, in the community, in the home, in the church, at your job, changing things, pulling down, rooting out. And so you got to stop with the excuses. Jeremiah's excuse, Lord, I'm a child. I can't speak. Say not that I am a child. Don't say that you're not ready. Say, God, yes. Every prophet of God said yes. Every prophet was like, send me. That's what Isaiah said. Send me. They said, who will go for us? Then said I, send me, Lord. And this was when the angel, this was after the fact that the angel took the hot coals and put it upon his mouth, put it upon his lips. Because in the beginning of that scenario, he was like, I I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. But then the angel took the coal and put it upon his lips and said, now thy iniquity is purged. God is doing a purging on the inside of you. And that is the reason why you are being set apart. Because the thing is, is that when God does the separating, when God God does the sanctification and, 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 and the consecration, he is setting you apart. And a lot of times it comes in the winter times of our lives. It comes in one of the seasons of life. And a lot of times we don't understand it. Sometimes we're we're even thinking, Lord, have I betrayed you? Have I betrayed, you know, my friends, my family? Because now I'm so devoted to the call of God. Now I'm so devoted to to the vision that you placed on the inside of me. And now I'm feeling guilty. No, you ain't feeling guilty. It's just the fact that God is, is, is calling you. He's calling you and people are pulling on you. And so here's the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this. Is that God has called you for such a time as this. And and people are going to pull on you. They're going to pull on your emotions. They're going to try to manipulate you to get you to stop. And I'm not going to lie. Some relationships are going to have to die in order for certain things to live. Dysfunctions have to die in order for order and structure to live. That's the God knows truth. Manipulations have to die in order for love and purpose to be revealed and to live. And so the one thing that God has called you to, he's called you to be a son. He's called you to be prophetic. He's called you to live. And he's called you just like Jeremiah. And so next week, we're going to talk about John the Baptist because a lot of us right now, man, hey, we feel like we are crazy. They say, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, I felt it myself. I felt like, you know, when I started talking about 
racism. When I started talking about the church, I ain't going to lie. I felt like I was betraying the church. When I came out with my second book, let no man put asunder, kick the clergy out your bedroom. I felt like that I was betraying the ministry. But then I had to ask myself, am I more committed to the church and to ministry than I am the people? The people that are being violated, the people whose homes are being, you know, made in disarray because of a title of a minister. And some of these ministers have wrecked people's homes. And some of these ministers will not talk about what is happening in the black community. And I felt like that I was betraying them. And I had to realize I'm not betraying them. I'm up here looking out for the little guy. I'm looking out for the people sitting in the congregation. Especially when you got wolves dressed as sheep. Especially when you got wolves in sheep's clothing. Especially when you got hirelings who's supposed to be shepherds. Because I'm going to tell you, man, yo, like I said, this preach game is like the drug game. And, and a lot of congregants and a lot of sheep, yo, man, you just a, you just a meal that they just going to serve up. Sorry to say it, but it's the truth. Because when they can sit up here and take your tithe and not even say nothing about what's happening in the community, you have to actually ask yourself, what am I financing? You're financing your own oppression. So this is the reason why God has called you to pull down, to destroy, and to get into plant. And that's the God knows truth. To throw down, to build up, and to plant. So, hey, we're going to end right here. I'm going to be back next week. But this is just the beginning. This is part one. And I ain't going to lie. You're going to feel like you're crazy because I felt like I was crazy. I felt like I was betraying the ministry. I felt like I was betraying my church. But I knew what God said. And I ain't going to lie. The rumor mill started. People that didn't even read my book thought that I was shooting at my pastor. No, I wasn't. And the crazy thing about it is that, you know, it's, it's funny, man, how rumors spread and how things just, I mean, it's just crazy, man, how, how people are that don't even know you. And, that, and that's the one thing that you're going to have to endure because you're going to get commentary from people. And I'm going to tell you, it don't matter. You got to keep going. Whether the commentary is negative, whether the commentary is positive, you as a man have to keep going because people always got an opinion. People are always going to tell you how you should do things. You know, the crazy thing is, is that Noah, God got instruction by Noah on how to build the ark, but people laughed him to scorn until it started raining and God sealed the opening of that boat. People are going to call you crazy. People are going to call you false prophets. People are going to call you delusional. But you know what God placed on the inside of you. I'm going to tell you, go with God. Because these are the same people that were committed to your weakness. But now, all of a sudden, you start to exemplify strength. You're starting to get to the place where the glass ceiling has been broken. And now they want you to go back. I'm going to tell you this. If you go back, it's like a dog returning to its vomit. God has not called you to go back. God has called you to go forward because prophecy is forward speaking. Living the prophetic life is about moving forward, about progression. It's about confirmation. God has declared to you this day that he is going to give you a good life. That God is going to give you a life of prosperity. God is opening up the windows of heaven for you. God is opening up doors for you. But the one thing about the prophetic word is this, is that the prophetic word at times, when you get that word from a prophet, or when you get that word from an apostle that flows in, in, in the prophetic ministry, or flows in that gift of the prophetic, even prophetic intercessors, some of those prophetic words are time sensitive just can't sit and think that that word is going to be there years from now when that word comes to you get on that word say yes to that word 
and God is going to help you maneuver through life, through the journey. Because like I said, it's about the journey. Some of you are thinking, if I can just get there, what is there? It's always going to be a there. It's always going to be a they. They and there. They said this, man, please forget what them Negroes have said. Forget what they saying now. And know that God has said yes. Know that the promises of God are yes and amen. And if he has called you, say yes. Just like the apostles say yes. You say yes. Just like Jesus said yes. Say yes. Not my will, but thine will be done. That was his yes. But the one thing that I want you guys to understand before before any of all of this, before the call, God was saying, this is my son. This day, I'm well pleased with you. God is proud of you. And that you belong to God. I don't care what's happening. (laughs) Man, please. You may be up to your neck, over your head, in jail, lost your license on child support. God still want to turn your situation around. I don't care what you've done. God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver. And God never gave up on you. People might have gave up on you, but God ain't never gave up on you. And the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this. Is that no matter what people say, depend on what God has said. And if God has said anything, he said this, as many as received him, that them gave me power to become sons of God. He has said about you, I'm well pleased. The words of God spoken to Jesus are your words as well. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my son, hear ye him. These are the words of God. And I'm here to tell you as a prophet of God, as as your pastor this morning, that God is pleased with you. That God wants to heal you. That God wants to save you. That God wants to deliver you. Because you are the beginning. You are the one. You are the one. You may be the black sheep of the family, but the black sheep is going to be the one to lead the white sheep out of out of Egypt. And God has called you. You ain't betraying nobody. The betrayal comes when you betray yourself by allowing yourself to stay in that cage when you have the key to freedom. And the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So guys, I just want you to be blessed. I want you guys to, hey, subscribe to the podcast, The Brother Leon Show, Truth and Life Urban Ministry. Look me up on Facebook, Truth and Life Urban Ministry. You can, you know, request to be a part of the group because what we're going to be doing is with these messages, we load them up on Facebook, we put them in the group, and also you have in the group as well, you know, things that I do. We have the vision, we have the mission statement. Pretty soon we're going to put the doctrine on there, what we believe. Because the one thing that I want you guys to know, man, people thought that I was crazy. People still think that I'm crazy. I'm crazy, you know, because I am an advocate for the LGBTQ community because I believe that our black trans women should not be being murdered. I believe that people should have equal rights and access. And I've caught a lot of flack for that. You know, some people don't believe that I don't serve God because I'm willing to be a person who believes in, you know, our brothers and sisters. They are a part of God. You know, they are God's children as well. And then on top of that, our our church is inclusive. So if I'm willing to be inclusive, if I'm saying, you know, live your truth, and I'm saying that to heterosexual as well as LGBTQ+. My thing is, is that the Bible says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I believe in the word of God, the whole word of God. I don't believe in bashing people. And I've caught flack for that. I caught flack for being an advocate out here in these streets. Being a protester in the streets. But at the end of the day, I'm like, nah, man, this is what God has called me to. This is what I'm I'm passionate about. And yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. 
I'm crazy enough to leave the confines of the church and go out here in these streets because the, the streets need prophets. The streets need pastors. The street needs advocates. And these are the people that we need in church. So, I mean, yeah, I caught a lot of flack. We'll catch a lot of flack. I'm catching flack from the LGBTQ plus community when I take and do interviews of people that call them, you know, that, that, that were in the lifestyle, but now out the lifestyle. But then, you know, they ministering to people now about, about how God can deliver. And sometimes, man, there's certain trigger words. I get that. But it's about living your truth. And a lot of times people can't accept the fact that a person's consciousness has changed. But the one thing that I love about God is that he's always the same and that the purpose of God is to manifest. That's the purpose of God. So, guys, I want you to be blessed. And on this, man, for real, you ain't crazy. Just like I know I ain't crazy. I just know what God said. And a lot of times people, they can't accept the fact that you have changed. Don't expect people to understand how you changed. Because a lot of them, they ain't going to get it. And you can explain it to them. You can write it down. You can write it in Arabic, ABC, put it in pictures. They ain't going to get it. They ain't supposed to get it. They don't want to get it. Some of them don't want to see. Because it makes them feel as though that now I got to catch up. No, sometimes you can't take certain people into your future. And that's the hard part of life is that there are people who who may be seasonal people, but they're not the ones that go into prophetic destiny. And some people, man, I'm sorry to say it, they were fair weather, spring and summer. But as soon as fall and winter came, they gone. So that's just a part of life. So I want you guys, man, to know that even though it's a part of life, God has still called you. And like I said in Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew thee. Before you were formed in your mother's belly, God knew you. He knew everything about you. He knew all your screw-ups, all your mess-ups, where you was going to fall short at, but he still called you. He still said yes. And so if God has still said yes, You say yes because the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Agree with the word of God. Agree with God. Agree with the prophetic destiny over your life. And walk with him. Walk with him every day. Walk with him in prayer. Walk with him in meditation. Walk with him when you start prophesying over your life, decreeing over your life. And here's how you start. I am a son of God. And when you begin to decree, I am, I am strong. I am rich. I am wealthy. I am whole. I am healed. I am delivered. That is prophecy. Because the Bible says in the book of Job that thou shalt decree a thing and it will be established unto thee. Then the light shall shine upon thy way. God said, let us make man in our image and in our own likeness. And if God can speak a word, if God is called, I am, you are called, I am. Pull up that divinity, man. Pull up, man, pull it up. Pull it up like you pulling up your pants. Pull it up like you pulling up them boxers. Pull it up. And be the man that God has called you to be. Be the woman that God has called you to be. Operate in the prophetic like God has called you to do. And know that God is with you. I am is on the inside of you. I am has given you access. I am has given you blessing. I am has given you. You are the testimony of Jesus. And Jesus has testified about you. The works that I do shall you do. And greater. Because I go into my father. Your father is God. Jesus is your brother. Man, I feel it all over again. And I call myself ending. So I want you to know, man, you got the example in Jesus. You got the example of what he did, what he said, who he is, prophetically, symbolically, and God is your father. 
God is your father. Jesus is your brother. And just like he was the Christ, you have access because he is the Christ. And you are, and you are Christ. You ain't Jesus. Jesus is the template. Jesus is, is the mastermind. But you are the anointed one for your family. You are the anointed one in the workplace. Because that word Christ is not Jesus' last name. It is the title. The Christ. The anointed one in his anointing. The Christ. The Christ of God. He was the Christ of God. You are you are the Christ on, 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 in that office place. They need you to pray. They need you to lay hands. Hey, man, please. You're going to have Nicodemuses coming to you by night, coming to you and on a break. Talking about sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, can you pray for me? That's what God has called you to. Even some of you, even some of you who are fathers, God has called you to be the Christ in that house. The anointed one and his anointed. Don't get it twisted like I'm trying to tell you. You you know, you no, man, I'm not trying to tell you to be an antichrist. You are not the antichrist. I'm telling you, hey, man, walk in that example, walk in that power. That's what I'm saying. So don't get my words twisted. But the one thing I want you to know, man, it is for today. And like I said, God is with you. So going back, I'm done. This message will be up on the podcast later today. And the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that, hey, man, God is with us. And I want you to to subscribe, subscribe to the Brother Leon Show. You can get that wherever you get your podcast, just like Truth and Life Urban Ministry. We are on Facebook, and what God is having us do on the Brother Leon show is that we are delving into the relationships. Um, Right now, I'm praying to God that I can get a hold of a family law lawyer. So I'll be talking to a family law lawyer, hopefully on Monday, see if we can get um, get her to come on the show and talk about child support, because I ain't going to lie, some men are railroaded with child support. And here lately, I ain't going to lie, my guilty pleasure is watching the ratchetness on the Maury Povich show. And the crazy thing about it is that, man, it just seems like even with that, it's, it's almost like it's, it's a circus. And we as black people, man, we got to stop being the circus for other people to enjoy. Entertainment. Taking pain. And, 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 and looking at it as entertainment. It's ratchetness. You know, and, and the crazy thing about it is that, you know, somewhere along the line, we got to, We got to do better. Seriously, we got to do better. Because, you know, people are making millions off of us, off of our pain, off of the fact that, 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 you know, we let our sexuality and we let our sexual energies just get the best of us. And that's what I mean, man, about us taking sex so trivial. We got to do better. We got to be better as people. Because if not, we'll always be the laughing stock. So, something got to give. But with that being said, guys, I want you to be blessed. I want you to pray. Our country is in disarray. People are talking about we need to secede from the union because, you know, President Trump's last plea got knocked down by the Supreme Court. And a lot of people are upset. But the Bible says that we are to pray for those who are in authority over us, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. And it hasn't been quiet and it hasn't been peaceful for a long time. But we still need to pray. We need to pray for our ingoing president as well as our outgoing president. And the one thing that I'm seeing right now is that people are angry. People are violent. People are hostile. I never never thought that I would see a time like this. Seriously. But... You know, when you have fear that is in our atmosphere due to coronavirus, it brings out the worst. But the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that perfect love cast out fear because fear hath torment. So if it comes against my power, if it comes against my mind, if it comes against my love, it's not God, it's fear. So you rebuke the fear and you trust and you walk in God and you love yourself, love yourself enough and love, love others 
that you get yourself tested, that you wear the mask, that you have hand sanitizer. Love yourself that you don't get out here and, and get in these large crowds because a mask isn't 100%. I'm serious. A mask is like the modern day condom for the face. Condoms were never 100% effective, but they are effective, just like the mask. So I'm telling you, do what you got to do. Have faith, but don't give in to the fear. Because I thoroughly believe that once you give in to the fear, that's where it starts. That's where it starts. And when you give in to the fear, ain't no telling what may happen. And you find, and you get tormented in your mind all the time. So with that being said, guys, hey, I love you. And I just want to say be blessed, man. Enjoy your families. Hey, if you're going to have Christmas get together, make sure that everybody is tested. Make sure they get tested the week of before Christmas. Like right now, you're ready to go get tested. So make sure everybody gets tested so that you can enjoy one another. Even then, you know, space out, social distance. So, hey, we getting ready to go into lockdown real soon. I know the governor's putting up new ordinances and things of that nature, but be safe. And this is why we're online because we're keeping people safe. I want you to be safe because, man, I love you. And as a pastor, my thing is to make sure that you stay safe. And that's the God knows truth. So with that being said, guys, we are out. When you have truth and life, you have freedom. Follow Truth and Life Urban Ministry on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Like, share, and subscribe to Truth and Life Urban Ministry. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. Peace.